Hello and welcome to this IABM webinar entitled Tips to Give You the Best Chance of Winning a BAM Award. My name is Ben Dales and I'm the Digital Media Manager here at IABM. Joining me for the webinar today is John Ive, IABM Director of Strategic Insight and Chair of the IABM Award Judges, Rob Ambrose, Managing Consultant at High Green Media, Roger Thornton, IABM's very own copy cruncher, and Lorenzo Zani, IABM's Head of Insight and Analysis. The purpose of this webinar is to find out from some of our judges what you can do to maximise your chances of winning an IABM BAM award. We've chosen four of our judges for this webinar, but it should be pointed out that we have over 40 men and women on our judging panel from across the world representing a broad cross-section of the industry. If you haven't heard about the BAM awards, they're presented twice a year at NAB Show and IBC, and they're open to all exhibitors at each show who have launched a new product or service within 12 months of that show. So before we get into the webinar, just to discuss a bit more about the BAM Awards. So what makes the BAM Awards unique? Well, the BAM Awards are global. They're run by the industry's only international trade association. They're independent. Our judging panel consists of over 40 non-affiliated subject experts. They're inclusive. They're open to everyone exhibiting at NAB Show Las Vegas and IBC Show. They're relevant. They recognize innovations that deliver real business and creative benefits. They're meaningful to buyers are being built on the new IABM BAM content chain industry model. They're the gold standard. Being shortlisted guarantees worldwide recognition. And they're credible, rewarding leading edge innovation for more than 20 years. So the awards break away from outdated hardware centric industry models with categories that are based on IABM's industry model, the BAM content chain from creator to consumer. Now we'll touch on the content chain and the categories a little bit more later on in the webinar when we speak to Rob. It's also worth noting finally, for those of you who are members or represent IABM member companies, platinum and gold members are entitled to two complimentary entries per year and startup silver and silver hundred plus members to one complimentary entry per year. Entries open for the NAB Las, Las Vegas uh, BAM Awards, and you can find out more by following the link you can see on the screen. So let's get into the discussion with our judges. So John, as chair of the judges, let's start with you. You've been chair for a number of years, so must have seen hundreds, if not thousands of award entries. How important is it that the entry clearly demonstrates what's new with the product or service? Thanks, Ben, and uh, thanks for the introduction. It it's a good question because uh, actually what's new is key to maximizing the chance of selection for the shortlist and subsequently a chance to win. And you're, you're right. I've seen many potentially worthy entries miss out because the application form is full of content that just doesn't make it stand out among the competition. And again, as you mentioned, the awards have gained respect over the years for the rigorous process that we go through to select the winners. And we've, um, we've got more than 40 judges and they're all specialists in one or more of the categories. And um, again, as you said, um, we can receive 100 plus applications, which is a, a huge amount of work and there's not enough time to do additional research. So the first point to say is that what's in the application form is absolutely vital. Um, what we need to grasp quickly is what's new, uh, the uniqueness amongst peer products and services, plus increasingly important is how it's going to change operations and benefit end users. And it's very good to say that these things will happen, but it has to be substantiated as well. Um, we don't need a comprehensive list of specifications. Um, they just tend to use up valuable application space, but add very little value. Um, one of the things that I would stress though, is that the positive aspects of what you need to emphasize um, can apply to both large infrastructure products and services, or even offerings from smaller companies that may not change the overall landscape, but will introduce a strong and beneficial impact into their chosen specific field. So I guess that's where I'd, where I'd start in terms of positioning the, um, the applications. Okay, well, thanks, John. That's a really good sort of introduction to the overall idea of entering into the awards. Um, Roger, if I can bring you in now, um, from a copy point of view, how important do you think it is for an entrant to find that right balance between being too detailed and not giving enough information? 
Well, good afternoon, everyone. I, I, I think the first point on this is that the word count limits given in, in the entry boxes actually should concentrate your minds in terms of um, picking out what's important. Um, I'm going to repeat some of what John said and perhaps add my own angle. I think the first thing to think about is look at your entry from the user's point of view. What problem does it solve for them? How does it help them do better business? And that could be any of saving money, time, increasing efficiency, speeding workflows, opening new market opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. Um, flesh these out, but give benchmarks for them. Don't just make bold claims. In other words, don't just say it saves time. Say it saves how much time for what reason, for instance. Um, and then when you've established that, that level of fact, then you can back it up with the necessary technical de detail to describe how innovation enables this to happen. Um, some awards entries I've seen over the years just get lost in technical description before explaining the what, who, how and why, which are the, so important to me. Uh, going back to John talking about 100 plus entries, we need a very quick way in to what your innovation is. We don't need to be beating around the bush. And, and that means making it easy to read and understand. And this is really important um, to stand out amongst those hundreds. You've got to make it easy for us as the judges to understand your entry. That means use, using the fewest words you need to convey the idea um, and making every one of them meaningful in conveying your point and also making it easy to read and so easy to remember. Um, I personally find there's a read aloud feature in, in Microsoft Word, which I find really useful for this, to see how your copy will sound, just have a robot read it out to you. Um, it'll make it very clear where you've got two longer sentences and, or convoluted sentences, for example. I'd also recommend that you always have a colleague read your copy before you submit it. They'll spot things that you don't as the writer, and uh, as a writer, um, of, fair few years experience, I can account for the usefulness of having a colleague to hand. Um, get, going back to the, you know, ask them to say, have you told me the, the what, who, how and why? Um, and the final thing I'd say on that aspect of it, don't assume that I'm an expert in your particular field. So you need to spell it out clearly for me. Don't assume I have expert knowledge of particular technologies. I'll just add one other thing on here because I'm not sure it's going to come up elsewhere. On the application form, you get a chance to embargo your, your entry. Um, stop me, Ben, if I'm covering other ground. Um, no, that's good to cover it. it. It's, it's much better for you if you allow us at least to announce just the product name and a one-line description. You get much better publicity out of that than just saying X company has been shortlisted. It does, that doesn't do anything to help drive traffic to your stand or um, you know raise awareness and interest. And, and that's part of what entering the awards is all about I think so I'll, I'll finish there so I, I would say on that as well though whilst it is a good thing for you to for us to be able to do that there is also the option if you were if it was really secret and you didn't want to announce it you are able to choose on the form to embargo the product and we will and you mentioned the um the thing up until up until the night well thanks for that Roger that was especially actually, can I just come back in on that yeah, just, just one um the the name remains a secret anyway just amongst the judges um, it, it, it doesn't get talked about beyond the judging group until the shortlist is announced and that's about a week before the show. So, you know, there's not going to be much overlap, um, potential damage even by just announcing the name a week before, I don't think, and that can help drive the interest. Yeah. So, Rod, just one quickly, one of the things I picked up from what you were saying there, um, we sometimes get um, entries where people have sort of copied a press release that might have been sent out about a product. Um, do you think it's worth not doing that and putting more sort of time into thinking of it, not as a press release, but as an actual entry? Um, it depends how you write your press releases, I guess. Um, but if, because the, the, the criteria you have for a press release is still the same. It's, it's catch the interest of the reader, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them what you're telling them, tell them what you told them again. Um, in the shortest possible time. So in theory, I guess you could put a press release in, but in practice, um, this is, you're, you're concentrating more on the technology, I guess, and the effect on the customer than purely an announcement, which is what a press release tends to be. So I would tend to steer away from that. By all means, lift bits of copy from all sorts of various sources. I think most of us do that anyway, but just make sure that every word you use is relevant to the award submission. Okay, well, thanks for that, Rog. So, Rob, I mentioned earlier that the awards are centred around the BAM content chain, uh, which is a project you were instrumental in developing. What advice would you give to people when choosing which category they should submit their product or service into? 
Well, the BAM content chain model was launched actually just less than a year ago. It was uh, NAB last year that we officially announced it. So it's still quite new. Uh, I think people have had time to get to grips with it now. And the important thing to remember is it reflects how your customers think about and, and buy and use your solutions. Um, it's really simple to understand, but also really important when you're entering the awards to know which part of the content chain your product or service fits best. So what you can see on the screen here is from the uh, IABM website, the BAM shop window. Um, now that's a useful tool in its own right because it allows you to list your products, but it's also a great place to go and decide which is the best category to enter your product in. Um, you'll see a list, a detailed description there of pretty much every possible product category imaginable. You can see other similar products and uh, take a careful look and choose the most appropriate category. Um, and as John and Rod were saying, the judges are really looking for how well your entry solves a, a business problem or a creative challenge in that part of the content chain. So if you enter in the wrong category, it will be really hard to score uh, well. Um, just to flag up a couple of examples that have tended to catch people out in the last two awards that we've been running using the BAM content chain model. Um, a lot of people, of course, have products relating to uh, VOD and OTT solutions, which could, if you look at the diagram on the screen, potentially fit into manage, publish, monetize, or consume. But the key thing is, what is the focus of your product? Very few products are doing all of those. So don't just pick the category that you think is about right. Look at the descriptions of where those uh, categories work and what they do, and then pick the one that's most relevant for your solution. Um, another example to kind of be aware of is support where many of the supporting technologies, things like test and measurement and, and PC over IP fit in. And again, sometimes people with products in those categories mistakenly enter them in one of the others. So check online. If you're still not sure, just ask us and uh, we can point you in the right direction. Okay, so um, we allow people as part of their submission, Rob, to enter one sort of main category and then they can also submit their entry into an additional category. Would you, what advice would you give them if entering into an additional category? Should they, rather than just submit the whole thing as one with two categories, should they tailor some of their answers to fit both of those categories to make it a bit more, a bit more relevant? Absolutely. And, and you know, there's nothing worse than seeing exactly the same entry against two parts of the content chain, because how can um, one identical piece of wording possibly explain how that product is going to help solve a business problem at different parts of the content chain. So firstly, if you have a focused product, just enter in a single category. Don't think that by entering in two categories, you're going to somehow increase the chance of, of um, landing a point somewhere. And it tends to work the other way, actually. I think if the judges see that the entry has been entered in two different places, um, it kind of counts against them, actually. Um, in the other case that you've got a, a much broader solution, for example, an end-to-end -end solution that, that helps people go right through the life cycle of content, um, that may well span multiple parts of the content chain, and that's fine. But if you're going to enter your product across two of those categories, you've got to take the time then to explain how it works for each of them. Um, so, for example, taking that uh, OTT platform again, um, you might focus, for example, on how you enable an innovative um, revenue model under monetize, but highlight features of how the, um, the app or the uh, consumer facing player works in consume. But don't just put the same wording in for both of those categories, because clearly they're two different things. Okay, so I'm getting a sort of theme from a lot of the answers here is that it's the more time and efforts, probably the wrong word, but the more time you put into the into the application and making sure that it's all, all set out, right, will give you more of a chance with the judges. Um, Lorenzo, I'd like to bring you in now, if that's okay. Um, so you head up our insight and analysis uh, team here at IABM. So you see a lot of data that supports the use cases of a number of the elements of the content chain. Should entrants include data to back up their claims? Would this get your attention more? Thanks, Ben. Uh, yes, definitely. definitely. Um, I think they should uh, include data if they have uh, 
any data that can demonstrate the, the goodness the, of the application and to be more specific and i'm going to uh, reiterate uh, uh, what roger said before i think that this data should focus on our buyer has been helped or can be helped uh, overcome uh, a challenge or achieve the, a specific business goal uh, through the deployment of the solution in the application uh, in terms of uh, data the percentages are always good for this as they are very immediate so no need to be complex with the analysis of the benefits and if you want to include a more complex analysis still try to uh, be as simple as possible as the judges come from uh, different backgrounds and uh, don't have a lot of time uh, available uh, if the data refers to an actual deployment of the product uh, this might help as well because uh, uh, if a customer is, uh, is deploying it or if it's a test, but uh, there is actual data, uh, it, it might help uh, evaluate the application better. To give you some examples, a, a good application can include um, data uh, on the percentage increase in content produced by a buyer uh, at the same uh, or at a lower cost, uh, uh, the percentage of savings achieved through automation or the percentage increase uh, in revenue. So some of the uh, examples that uh, also Roger gave you before. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Lorenzo. Um, so, John, the initial stage of judging involves going through over 100 entries. What can an entrant do to make sure their entry stands out to you? Uh, we can see the entry form on the screen at the moment. Uh, are there any parts that people need to pay particular attention to? What part of the form is crucial to get right? Well, um, I'm inevitably going to say that uh, every part of the entry form is there <laughs> for a reason, Ben. So, um, I'd have difficulty in singling out any, any one part. Um, but as has been touched upon before, the quicker our judges get the message about the innovation and the impact on operations, uh, the better. Um, we do see a lot of applications that are a rework or often not even a rework, but straight copy, copy of marketing messages posted on company websites or, or brochures. Now, as Roger said, that has, can be very useful, but you've got to be careful because they're being addressed at two different requirements and um, uh, be careful when you choose material from those sources because uh, our judges are not looking for marketing speak. I'm sure Roger's got a, a whole list of uh, marketing phrases that we, we experience and uh, find not very helpful, um, unsubstantiated kind of superlatives like best in class, revolutionary new solution. Um, we'll quite have frankly, they're sometimes a turn off. Um, we need to quickly grasp why an application stands out with facts. And although Roger was very modest in saying he's a generalist, we do have, uh, and Roger knows a lot, but we do have specialist judges in specific categories as well. And so they can see through some of the, um, the shallow comments and do understand the, the applications that they're studying. So um, I guess I'd answer your question in a somewhat different way, Ben. The, the best applications are written by people who fully understand the product or service and have real practical experience of what makes a difference. Excellent. So, Roger, John touched on it slightly there, but how important is clarity of uniqueness? Doesn't everyone claim to have unique or best product or service? And how can they really push that theirs is the genuine article? I come back to what I said earlier, really. Um, what's the need it addresses and, who, and who's it for? So if there's a real need out there that you are fulfilling, then you're, you're in a sense identifying your uniqueness. So I wouldn't actually get too hung up on this. Um, I go back to what John said, our judges have wide ex experience and expertise, so they'll know whether what you're offering is really unique. Um, so I just really can go back to my what, who, how, and why, and make every word count. Um, you know, give me solid reasons why your product should win, stick to the point. And I think that's, I think that will tell me how unique it is by the way you put it across. Okay, so I guess with the judges having the experience that they've got, it's important to realize that they will know if, um, if what you're saying is maybe slightly exaggerated or. Yeah. Maybe... And, and, and in, in a sense, the word unique is possibly one of those words that I should have on my um, words to be avoided list. Yeah, well, I mean, we can, when we get to the slide, we'll, uh, we'll discuss uniqueness as well. Um, ben, um, I'll just come back on that. It, uh, I know from experience, if you start to see a few phrases 
that are essentially meaningless in an application, there is a risk of mentally switching off when you're judging. So it's a, there's a real risk that you do yourself a disservice um, by uh, not putting in effectively substantiated claims or, or, or using marketing speak. It sort of colors your attitude to the whole application if you're not careful. So uh, as Roger said, really go back and reread that application and make sure that, um, that, um, that you don't uh, put in things that are going to actually turn the judges off. And then have one of your picky colleagues read it again for you. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's, that's great advice there. Um, Rob, what would you say is the most important part of an entry for you? Well, what I'm looking for, I think more than anything else, is um, entries that really demonstrate that the, the, the product uh, supplier, the vendor, really understands how the industry is changing and how their solution is able to make a difference. So if you look at the research that Lorenzo's team does, talking to broadcast and media companies who are buying technology top of their list always is needing new solutions that deal with a, a fundamental change in the business model of their operation whether it's a shift to ott and vod services or um, shifting their technology to the cloud or whatever it may be and it's really important to me that if we're going to be judging entries that are innovative and defining the direction of the industry it's got to, the, the entries have really got to explain that and, and show how those solutions make a real difference. Um, I also attach really high priority to solutions that are new and innovative. And if the solution has been on the market for a little while, particularly from before the previous awards, so sort of more than six or 12 months, um, it's really important to explain what is fundamentally new or different now to justify it being entered. Um, and then the final thing, I think, echoing what John and Roger have said is don't just say what the solution is, but say how it's going to help a broadcaster media company who's going to buy it. What are the benefits? What's the ROI? And I took a couple of examples from previous entries and changed the names to protect the innocent. But, um, you know, a bad example is to title the entry um, Acme, the new generation widget adjuster. In other words, just saying what the thing is called. A much better example is how Media Inc. grew its OTT revenue by 75% with Acme's widget adjuster. You can see that instead of just saying what the product is, you're immediately setting it in the context of the industry change and the benefit. And that just makes the entry jump off the page. I'm going to go back to the form now. You can see we've got on there the option for image upload and supporting material. How important as a judge do you find the images or videos to back up an entry? And do you find you have the time to look at them or watch the videos? Thanks, Ben. Uh, I personally, I, I think this depends on the, on the judge as well, but I personally find it helpful to look at one or, or two images, particularly if the product consists of uh, software with a user interface, but also if it's uh, equipment. That said, we do not have uh, a lot of time to look at uh, a gallery of images, so it's worth selecting a few of them to really convey the features of the solution and the easiness to, to use it. Uh, it is also import, uh, uh, with regards, uh, important with regards to images to, to note that this can work in support of an application, but not by themselves. They're, they're just a part of the application. Okay. So important to make sure that the two sort of complement each other yeah. um, and they both can work together. Um, so, Rob, how important are examples of how the product is being used by broadcast and media companies and how much detail should an entry go into? Um, to me, really important. Um, I really like to see examples of how a product's being used by a broadcaster or media company, some sort of case study, because that's all about demonstrating that the product is solving some sort of real world problem rather than, as sometimes comes across actually, that it's a clever technology solution in search of a problem. So setting that example out. Now, that can be difficult if it's a really, really new product and still kind of at the uh, the beta stage or, or proof of concept stage but again um, most people when they're developing products should be doing that with particular um, needs in mind and, and often doing that in collaboration with the pilot customer so the more real world examples you can give the better and as Lorenzo was saying 
showing screenshots or photos of the product in use can be really helpful because it helps the judges visualize the solution and see that it's being used for real. We discussed earlier, and Rob, you mentioned some, John mentioned some, and Roger mentioned some about phrases that would immediately put you off or phrases and how they should be used. So Roger, I'm going to primarily start with you on here, but if the rest of you can throw in any examples that we may not have mentioned um, on this slide that we've got here. So Roger, talk us through some of these. <laughs> the, the, I mean, I, I will put my hand up and say I'm guilty in, on some of these counts at some stages, but I use them very carefully and very sparingly. Um, they're the kind of words which journalists, never mind judges, throw their arms up in there and go, oh, lordy, not another one. The thing about these words is that they're useless words. You're using up your word count for something that, unless you justify it, um, with another few sentences saying why it's paradigm shifting or game changing, then they're just a waste of time putting in there and they tend to put people off when they're reading things as well they make it more difficult to read too um if you keep tripping over industry leading or whatever it, it just sort of oh, come on please get to the point so it's a quick it's really less a question of what not to use and more a question of making every word count stick to the point be factual not woolly so that's just a few examples on there i'm sure you can all think of lots more yeah, um, if I can come in, John, here. It, I mean, when I look at those phrases, they're, they're to me are almost, they're questions, they're not answers. Um, they raise questions and you want to see what is the substance behind it. That as a judge, that's immediately um, what comes to my mind. Is, and if they're not substantiated, it's a real turnoff. And some of my other favorites are uh, most comprehensive, rich features, high performance, industry first, uh, Again, all pretty meaningless words and not really justified by any of the uh, the data normally. I suppose quite a lot of fairly obvious as well. You know, you'd expect that someone's going to create a something best in class. They're not going to say it's the worst in class. I mean, you never see a pub that has a sign outside saying bad food inside. It's always good food, <laughs> isn't it? So that's, you know, it's fairly obvious that these yeah. things are going to be on those. Isn't it? And I suppose it's also important when you think about the way that the industry is heading at the moment that... Um, it's not necessarily appealing to buyers to be um, end to end or most comprehensive or rich features because often buyers are actually looking for a very focused solution. So don't be afraid to uh, focus in if you do one small thing very well. Yeah, so that leads me nicely actually on to the, the next question. I'd like to bring John in and say, so John, the industry is changing a lot. How can an entrant show that their product or service is an enabler of this change? Yeah, that's right, Ben. The the industry is changing in radical new ways. Um, but I would say it kind of affects the various industry segments differently. So um, we talk a lot about the IT and IP revolution, but that doesn't have to be an influence for everybody and every application, although it is probably the most influential factor today. Um, but where the big changes are happening End users are not looking to introduce technology to replicate old operational practices. They genuinely want to change the way they work and the way they implement technology. So I'd hope the applications are sensitive to that. So the best, the best entries demonstrate an understanding of the need for more than a shiny new replacement hardware or software that essentially just maintains the status quo and does it a bit better. Um, they want something that's more of a kind of holistic rethink of operations and a genuine contribution to the changes end users want to see. And um, actually, uh, the, in many cases, the application may be the result of a supplier end user collaboration, uh, which is, is increasingly happening these days. And um, touching upon, again, um, evidence of successful implementation is, of course, uh, helpful as well. Um, though as judges, we recognize that not, it's not always possible for a new product or service, which is just freshly launched at IBC or NAB, um, to have that kind of track record. So um, we are mindful of that, but where evidence exists, make the most of it. 
Yeah, so you mentioned there, John, about um, supplier and end user collaboration. Now, those of you who have been to a BAM award ceremony or have entered a product will have noticed that there's actually 10 categories, but there's nine parts of the chain. Um, so can you talk us through the 10th the category, why it's there and what advice you would give people entering into this category? Can we start with you, John, on that? Sure. Um, yeah, obviously, technology products and services are vital enablers in our industry but success and change is also coming in in different forms i guess the the nine categories cover the majority of the applications no doubt however in recent times we've seen some amazing collaborations between suppliers systems houses and end users with with groundbreaking projects new system solutions even even occasionally new categories in their own right and we don't want to exclude those we want to recognize those drivers of change and the 10th category does just that um, for example we've even had end users apply in the past and that's great because we want to make the awards fully inclusive so I'd say the 10th category is really exciting because we get many pleasant surprises each year about the fundamental changes and the new opportunities this era of transformation represents. But before entering this category, please make sure that none of the other nine are more relevant because in that case, they will represent your best chance of success. So that 10th category is definitely not a none of the above category. It's definitely a, you know, its own sort of standalone category. Yeah, you you've got to start with the other nine and um, and make sure that you're you're not best served by entering into those. Yeah, I think I'd just add, John, on that category. What's really interesting is to see entries that uh, collaboration is the word there. So entries that have really involved, for example, the the broadcast or media company working with the vendor or several vendors working together. Um, sometimes we get entries in that category which read something along the lines of the broadcaster bought our solution and we implemented it, um, which is not really the point of that category. It's not just um, how the solution, how, the, how a single project was done. It's all about the collaboration. Absolutely, Rob. That's a very good example. Um, I, I've seen several of those which uh, really should be back into one of the um, content chain categories. Okay, so I'm going to sort of wrap this up now we have got time for questions at the end if anyone does have any questions we've got some that have come in so we'll get to them in a second but I'm going to put you each on the spot now and I'm going to ask you starting with you Lorenzo I'm going to ask if you could give one piece of advice or a key takeaway to someone submitting an awards entry what would it be yeah man I'm gonna be very very brief a very brief piece of advice and I think it's too focused as we said uh, during this webinar to focus on the actual benefits of, of the solution and to to show them uh, uh, very simply uh, to us and eliminating any bass from it okay and then on to Roger um, I'll be short again uh, put yourself in the reader's shoes I want to be convinced by you so make it straightforward for me to understand your innovation and I'll come back to it. Test the words you've written on a colleague before you press the submit button. Okay, and Rob? I would say if you've got a product that's in quite a busy part of the market, so things like uh, uh, VOD in a box or MAM and workflow solutions, um, really important to demonstrate the unique features. I'm using that word, Rog, unique. The unique features of your product that set it apart from the crowd. Um, just avoid your entry appearing a bit too much like a, a me too solution. Okay, and then finally, John. That's totally unfair, me being last. Um, <laughs> everyone's covered everything. So I'm probably going to say something that um, uh, emphasizes what Roger said, but um, hopefully today's webinar has provided insights into the challenges we face as judges in selecting winners. But my advice would be to use this insight and reread the application as if um, you, the applicant, were a judge and rate your own work before submitting it. And what I hadn't thought of, which was a great input from Roger, is giving it to an independent person to read as well. I'm sure if people critique their own work in that way, they'd realize how impressed or otherwise the judges are likely to be. And you'll find more guidelines on the website to help with specific judging criteria. So you can reread your application with that in mind. 
Okay, well, thanks very much, everyone. I think that's one of the key things that we've got from this is put yourself in the judge's shoes, you know, and think about how they would read your, how they would read your entry. So that's, that's all really useful advice, thank you. So we're going to get to the questions part now. The first question that we've got is, our product is so new, we don't yet have customer examples. Would that penalise us? For me, uh, John, absolutely not. Um, if we did that, we would be missing out on some cutting edge uh, technology. Clearly, there's a, a challenge to, um, to uh, get the point across, but we want to encourage new products. Having said that, um, there is the requirement that um, the, anything that is submitted needs to be on display at NAB um, and laterally at IBC. So when we get to the event, I think if someone is fortunate enough to be in the shortlist, Ben, I think you're going around, we'll be doing some videos of the shortlisted uh, candidates. So, and also if the product is so new and there are still questions, the judges will go around in the opening day or so of NAB to, to visit the, the um, actual applications and learn more about them. So in that respect, um, I would encourage people to put in the newest of new, as it were, and um, we look forward to that. That's what makes it exciting. You just have to find ways in which uh, to substantiate uh, any claims that, about the application. Okay, did any of the rest of you want to come in on that at all? I think John's covered that. I think John covers it well. I, I, having worked at Quantel for 30 years, where we consistently launched stuff that didn't yet have a market, and we did manage to win awards for it, it is possible to do it. Yeah. So we've got another question coming here. So what if I can't find a relevant category for my entry? Rob, I guess you're probably best placed for that one, are you? Yeah, um, I hope that everybody will. Um, we've had the BAM content chain up and running for, um, well, launched publicly for a year and, and in development longer than that. And when we've been setting up the shop window on the IABM website, a lot of people have been in touch to figure out where to put their products. And 99% of the time, it slots right in. Sometimes we get a surprise, a new product category, particularly in an area that's very innovative. If that's the case, if you can't find where to fit, um, get in touch and then Ben and Joe will help and they will ask uh, myself and John and uh, Rog and, and Lorenzo who've been involved in putting the BAM content chain together. And um, sometimes if there really is an innovative new category, we'll create a new place in the content chain to accommodate it. Um, but it will go in there somewhere. I think that's important just to jump in there that if you are submitting an entry and you do have any questions or anything, then don't, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to us. Um, if you go through to marketing at the IABM.org, then and if one of us can't help, we can always speak to you. So we had someone inquired this morning about something and we we're able to get in touch with John as the head judge and we got an answer. So, you know, don't feel that, you know, don't be put off by the fact that you need some further information or anything. Do, um, do give us a shout and we're always available on the end of the phone or an email or anything or Twitter or anything like that. And there is a webinar, Ben, I think still on the website, which was from when we launched the BAM uh, content chain model. So if yes. that's still there, it's probably worth um, taking a look at that as well, because it gives kind of a bit more overview as to the thinking that goes on behind each of those categories. Yeah, so if you just head on to the um, under the events tab on our website, there's a webinar section and that has all of the on-demand webinars that we've done and this one will also be going in there tomorrow um, or via the Knowledge Vault. You can find various various items um, and Lorenzo, I think, has done a few presentations where he refers to the content chain, so always worth having a look on there. We've got one come in here that says, I have an end-to-end -end product from create to publish covering many categories. Where do I put it? It's kind of a little bit of a follow-on from the from the last question, I think. Yeah, I mean, I could jump in there. Uh, what I would say is, um, in reality, most end-to-end -end products are comprised of different modules, and, and each of those sections of the pro product is, is focused on taking a piece of content all the way from the camera to the consumer. And so to have the greatest chance of success, I think it makes sense to pick which areas you think your product is, is strongest and most innovative uh, and focus the entry on those. It's really hard to submit an entry that just says, yes, we can do everything um, because that kind of falls under that rather generalization category. Much better to identify which parts of your product are newest and most innovative uh, and focus in on those. So you know, maybe it is a new way of monetizing the content that's particularly interesting, in which case, put it in monetize or or maybe you've got some great new um 
AI or machine learning technology that's helping to to manage the content more effectively and get more value from it, in which case enter there. But um, I think the trick is focus in the entry rather than be general. Ben, can I just turn the question around the offset way? Because it's just reminded me of experiences we've had from past judging. Um, we used to have three categories. I think we've got two now. Um, but what I would say is the other way around. If you've got something that majors in one category, stick to that and don't just say, oh, I'll put put it in this other category as well to see if I've got a chance of uh, double the chances of, of winning something. Um, we have seen in the past that people felt that just using all the options will increase their chances. And in fact, seeing an application that's in an irrelevant category has quite the opposite effect and slightly alienates one towards the application. So um, it's totally reinforces what Rob said and everything else that use the categories. But if you really do actually only major in one, um, don't feel obliged just to use up your options and put it gratuitously into a second because the judges will spot that and it won't do you any favours. And if people want to know a bit more about the categories on the website, on the actual BAM Awards page on there, we do have a, there's some drop downs where you can click on each one and it will give some examples of products and services that fit within that category. Um, so that you can see, and again, if you've got any questions about where your product or service or entry would fit, then do, um, do just give us a shout and we can, uh, and we can look at that for you. So we've got another question here. Can I submit a product that is several years old, but has had a significant upgrade? Actually, so that's a good question. It, it seems that it's a fact of life these days that hardware is increasingly generic and software goes through many iterations over the years. Um, I guess in some cases, updates can redefine what a product or service can do. So yes, you can. The, the, the judges are only interested in important developments within the preceding 12 months. So listing features and benefits that have been in the product for longer are no value. In fact, we often find that a mixed list of features and benefits covering several years without clarifying it, the timing is a big turnoff. The judges just don't have time to research and find out what's relevant to the last 12 months and what's not. The application should make that clear. But the, the answer to the question is absolutely because um, software updates these days can uh, almost redefine a product and, um, and bring amazing new options and benefits. So as long as those are spelled out, uh, it's perfectly valid. Yeah, I think, John, it's all too often not clear, though, in entries, what is new? And, and if I see an entry and it seems a bit familiar, I will usually um, search for it online. And if it has been around for several years and it's not clear in the entry what's new now, then that definitely gets sort of marked down. So focusing in on the, that innovation is key, I think. There, Absolutely. I think that fits in. We have had a, a, another question come in. It's more of a more sort of statement, really, saying about how... Um, having a product shortlisted or rented in two years in a row. What's, what's the deal with that? And we did have a question earlier from someone asking if they had won a product, won a category in a previous year or they've been shortlisted or entered, are they still eligible to enter it again? So if they've entered at IBC, for example, are they still able to enter the same product at NAB? Or what's the, what's the rules yeah, and clarification um, around that, John? That we've, we've had a few examples of this. Uh, if we're just talking about a product, a new product that's been um, available in the last 12 months, um, we have had specific products that have been shortlisted in, uh, uh, could be either way around, IBC, and then get resubmitted for the following NAB. And that's perfectly okay. Theor it's never happened, but theoretically they could win both. Um, but... Um, the, that, that can be allowed. I think when this question is talked about two years, it just comes back to what Rob and I said earlier. Um, outside of 12 months, um, we're not so interested. But um, if there has been a radical development that's going to make a significant difference in the last 12 months, uh, in the time frame of validity of the awards, then um, yes, it can be allowed. Uh, and that could be particularly when 
we've had this case we talked about earlier on of a product being launched that doesn't yet have use cases. Six months later, it might have those use cases to make, make the claims much stronger. Um, so that would be a case where you definitely would want to put it back in again. Okay, that's great. So we've had a question come in asking us about um, the timings and stuff for everything. So the deadline for award entries is Friday the 8th of March. Um, you can go onto the, the IABM website and onto the BAM Awards page and you'll be able to see how you enter there. And then we actually announce uh, the shortlist is around about two weeks prior to the show. We'll announce that via a press release and an email. And then the winners are announced at the BAM Awards party, which is on Tuesday, the 9th of April, starting at 6 p.m. at the Westgate. So nice and close to the convention center. You won't have to wait for a taxi or anything. Walk over, have some drinks with us, do some networking, um, and then enjoy, enjoy the party. And we're actually in the process of arranging the party at the moment. Um, one of my colleagues is looking for a band at the moment and looking for various entertainment that we can have. So it's, it's guaranteed to be more than just an awards night. It's going to be a great um, social occasion as well for everybody who's there. So if we haven't got any more questions then, I'd just like to, to thank uh, John, Rob, Roger and Lorenzo for joining us. And like I said, if you have any questions, then please don't hesitate to let us know. And we look forward to seeing your award entries.